Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purge Reviews. So today on Purge Reviews, we're talking about Dream Home. And this is a really kind of a unique theme. This is something different than what we normally get. The beauty of this is you get a simple game, you get a simple board game that can be taught to nearly anyone with a theme that's gonna go outside orcs and, and those of us that like fantasy and, and things that we tend to like with fighting and blood and Vikings and stuff. So what you're gonna get here is a house where you're building your dream home and you're using this odd card selection, which I think is a poor man's or a beginner's drafting to get cards to put down on your home to score points. It's super simple to teach. It's super simple to play. The game flows very quickly. On your turn, you're just going to grab two cards. You're going to place them with very simple placement rules that will score you victory points at the end of the game. This game, I can't stress enough how easy it is to play, how easy this is what mass market games should be. Um, there is not a designer on the box. So it's almost like a mass market game. No designer. Uh, maybe Clemens Kalaki. A, a mass market game does not have to be roll and move or spin or some kind of screwage. It can be a legitimate game. It can have fun. And we're starting to see this in Barnes and Nobles and Target and other places. This is one of those games that can be that. I like that. The artwork is cute. It doesn't have naked women on it. It doesn't have people and monsters killing each other. It's about designing a home, and this is going to appeal to so many people. Now, the game is rather simple. There isn't a lot of like big, meaty decisions. It's a, it's, it's a concourse of a lot of small decisions that add up to something big, your home which is a normally the largest purchase in somebody's life, right? So let's take a look at the components, let's take a look at the game, and let's see how it flows, and see if it's something maybe that you'd like. So what we get here with um, Dream Home is a beautiful box that looks fantastic, uh, looks great, it shows somebody moving into a new home, so that's kind of what you're getting here. And what you're going to have is, I want to show this to you, which is um, an insert that looks like a house. I think mean, that's a really cute little thing that you're going to have with this. So let's take a look at the game set up and see what you get in the box because what you get is pretty good. So what you're going to get here, this is the border you'll be, you'll be picking the cards from each round. This is where the majority of the game is going to happen. Everybody's going to have their own house. What you're going to notice here is you're going to have 10 rooms up here, two for the basement, and you have a roof pile right here. Let me show you what you do. So on a turn, it's very simple. Uh, these cards are lined up. You will take uh, a set of cards. You always get one on the top, one on the bottom, but they match up. So like this. And you will place these in your house. If you take this one, you get first player, but only only a room card, you're not gonna get a roof card. So let me show you what these do. So the roof cards will come in different colors and these two right here are really close. Might be it's a little close when you're looking at it, but when you're trying to memorize it, it will. So whatever roof you get, so on your turn you'll take two cards, but they have to go together. So the roof card will come down here and you can never look at it again, and then you will place your room card somewhere on it. Now you can never place a card unless there's something below it. So these three do not require anything below it, but these two do. Uh, let me see. So you'll have these cards. It's a garage, but they look green here at the top. It's not just a garage. There's other ones. And they will go down here in your basement. And then when you do that, then you can place something here. So these rooms just have to be placed on top of something. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. I can do any of these. This cannot go up here. It has to go in the basement. Now you'll notice on this card that it says one, four, or nine. This is super important. So if you get one of these, it's worth one point. But if you were to get two of these next to each other, then it would be four points. Now it wouldn't be up and down, because that's not, you know, think about it thematically in a house. That would not make any sense. So that would be four. And if I was to get a third one, it'd be nine. Some of the rooms are just worth a number of points. And that's all you get. Uh, you'll see some of these roofs will have an extra point on it. 
So what you're doing with your roof points is you get to, at the end of the game you'll turn these over and if you have a set of four that match, that's worth five points. And any set that doesn't match is worth three and if you have the bonuses they're worth one extra. So it's, it's only two extra points if you get you know a complete four of one type. Two points can be very helpful but it, it isn't a ton of points either. Now at the top you might have some of these cards that would come out that you can select like the roofer which is a person that you can hire. Let me kind of show you the artwork here. And what he does is, at the end of the game, before you look at your roof cards, you may take one roof, roof card from the disc card. So they just allow you to kind of break the rules. Here's a jackhammer that you can get. Uh, before the first player's turn, discard this card to take one room card from the game board. Skip your turn this round. So you can actually act out of uh, turn order. You don't get a roof card, you just get the card below it. Uh, and that's really the entire game. So on your turn, depending, and if you want to go first, you take this. Here's the first player marker, which is really cute. It's a little house. Um, you take a set of cards and you place it on your board. Once they're placed, they cannot move unless you get a card that allows you to move it. And as the game progresses, you will just score your points at the end of the game. There are some cards that would give you these uh, decors, which a lot of these have to be placed on a certain type, like place this in a bedroom. It's a bed. A piano will only go in a living room. And if you have this on your board, you can put these on the cards and you'll score extra victory points. Um, here's a couple of plays of ours. Just kind of you score for the rooms, the decor, functionality. So if you have a if you have a bathroom upstairs and one downstairs, you get three points. If you have a kitchen, bedroom, and I believe a bathroom, you get three points. So the functionality of your house can be very helpful in getting points. Then your roof points are worth stuff. So um, our score wasn't so tight the first time, but the second time it was. And you get a number of these in here. And that's Dream House. Uh, it moves pretty quickly, and the turns are very, very simple. The question really is Dream House too simple? Um, not for a filler. Now, it's going to go a little bit longer than a filler for me when I play this. It's just like, let's just grab some cards and go. You don't want this game to drag on too long. The decisions are fun in filling up your board, but it's light. There's not a lot of going on. I would probably use this game as a filler to get the night going, or I would use it more as, let's get some people into gaming because it's themed. Or maybe if you have a wife or a spouse who likes to watch HGTV, uh, which is the American home decorating type channel that we have here, this may be it. There are fans like Property Brothers. I don't really know anybody else on there, but uh, this might be a game that would drive people in. Or if you want to play with a mother-in-law and they're coming over one night, this might be a good way to get somebody into gaming. This might make a good gift for like a real estate agent or somebody like that. Uh, it's light, but the, I think the more you play it, the first time we played, I kind of ran away with it. The second time, it was a lot closer, and it has been closer each time. There's some luck in the game. There absolutely is, and it's not to be taken too seriously. Uh, but there's a place for these type of games, and I think if this game was marketed well and had some backing of maybe HGTV, this game could be huge and not be a complete and utter mess like so much mass market is. Um, it's really important that we believe, and this is just a strategy we came up with, was it's really important to get those basement cards going so you can build anywhere on your um, house. There's a lot of screwage, and even if you don't need a basement card, just getting rid of it for somebody. Now, in a two- and three-player game, before you take the cards, the first player eliminates some cards, uh, a set of cards. And what they'll do a lot of times is if they already have their basement kind of set up, they'll just throw away every basement card that comes up. So it's very important to get that first player sometimes. Uh, first player is really important if you're trying to get a certain card. Now towards the end when people are trying to finalize their sets, it may not be as important because they're not going to get it. But if you're playing a two or three where somebody can just screw you and take out exactly what you need and not have to place it on their board, woo, that can be a dirty, dirty business. Um, the, there's new cards every round, so there's not a lot of planning from round to round. You could sort of count like how many living room cards are left, but I don't know. because You're also trying to count those roof cards at the same time, so that can be pretty tough. Uh, but if you see a lot of living room cards out, you might not want to go for that three-card set. Maybe just stop at a two. Um, but there's a few different ways to, to score some points, and it's simple, simple, simple. 
So don't expect too much. And this might be a double header with Pursuit of Happiness. That might be a good double header night to play this and then to play that. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend this game. Just kind of know what you're getting into here. Make sure this is a theme that you would like. Make sure you're okay with a light filler that takes a little bit longer than most fillers. And I think that you'll really enjoy this game. Now, it's not going to it's not gonna set the world on fire. It's not going to be a hot, hot game for a very long time. But what it does, it does really well. And I recommend for a keeper dream. thanks for watching the video i really appreciate you tuning in if you liked it please like it and hit that little subscribe button that really helps out the channel lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want if you agreed or disagree with what i said feel free to comment below i'd love to hear what you have to say and i promise that i will comment back thanks for watching and everybody else keep playing